Hello Fear Seekers, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be diving into some disturbing, allegedly true, poltergeist horror stories. If you enjoy the content and want to help the channel grow, consider leaving a like and subscribing to keep up with future videos. Now without further ado, sit back, put any idea of sleep away, and get ready to ferment your fears. Me and my family moved into this house in Arlington, Texas, and at first we didn't really expect anything bad to happen. The very first night that we moved in, or were about to move in, the landlord brought me and my brother to the bedroom, where me and him would be sleeping, and whispered in our ears that there was a demon in the house. Of course, we didn't believe her at first. We were really just skeptical of it. After a while, nothing happened. It was just a new house for us. It was a really nice house too, and we really liked the old feeling to it, and we would always have our doors and windows open during the summer so the breeze would come through. After a while, my mom was taking a shower in the shared bathroom when she heard a blood-curdling scream coming from inside the house. She thought it was our video game, so she grabbed a towel and cautiously went to the bedroom to tell us to stop playing violent games, but when she got to our bedroom, we were dead asleep. I made a new friend down the street from me. Her name was McKenna. She was the same age as me and we were always hanging out. One day I invited her to come over while no one else was home because I low-key had a crush on her and she came over and we went to my bedroom and just put on a scary movie on Netflix. As we were watching the movie, out of nowhere we hear every plate and glass and everything in the kitchen falling down and breaking. I was thinking that someone had broken into our house, so I grabbed my baseball bat and told her to follow me and to stay right behind me, and we snuck into the hallway. We both peeked our heads around into the kitchen, and every single cabinet and drawer was wide open, and as soon as we looked into the kitchen and saw this, every last one of them slammed shut. I immediately freaked out and I started to run, but McKenna was frozen in her place. She was looking at something with her mouth wide open, and I grabbed a shirt and screamed at her to go. We ran outside and I waited for my parents to get home. She went back to her house and texted me that she was never going to come back to my house again. I understood why, of course, but I asked her what she was looking at. She told me that she didn't want to talk about it, but that she would tell me later. Eventually, night came and I didn't tell anyone what happened. I just let it go because I felt like no one would have believed me anyway. Anyways, it was a school night. Summer was over and my brother was already asleep and I was trying to get to sleep. For some reason I just could not sleep at all so I laid in the bed and closed my eyes. Out of nowhere I feel a hand grab my hair and it felt like it was tugging me into the closet which was directly behind me. I tried to scream but it was as if I couldn't let any noise out. Eventually my mom and brother came to see what the problem was. I was laying on the floor kicking and screaming. I went to my mom's bedroom and slept with her that night, and as I was trying to sleep, McKenna texted me. She told me something that absolutely terrified me. She said that when we were in the kitchen, and the cabinets and drawers were wide open, she saw a black figure of a man standing on all fours on top of the fridge like a spider. I felt completely paralyzed with fear and I grabbed my mom's arm and held on tight for the rest of the night. There is a lot more that happened, but long story short, my mom almost got killed by the poltergeist too. She was in the shed in our backyard putting boxes away that we hadn't yet unpacked when we moved in and me and my brother were in the backyard playing football. Out of nowhere we hear our mom scream at the top of her lungs. She came barreling out of the shed as we ran to her. She was bleeding. She said she'd hurt her neck because as she was on the ladder trying to put the boxes on top of the shelves, a sharp stick was thrown at her and almost pierced through her eye, and she had to go to the hospital. We later found out that she'd broken her neck falling down. I am a very reasonable person and a skeptical one too. I never really believed in ghosts, but I absolutely cannot explain the reasoning behind the events that took place in that house. The 
This is my first time ever sharing my story. I have been wanting to share my experience to the internet to get feedback and just to try and make sense of it all. I have always been a ghost, spirit, poltergeist skeptic all my life. Until now. My story begins back in May 2013 in Killeen, Texas. I was, and still am, a soldier that was stationed in Fort Hood, Texas, living off post with my pregnant wife. We moved into a quadplex shortly after we got married. Everything was fine until around October. In our lease, it said, do not go into the attic. Cliché as it sounds, I decided to check to see why. I found out it was because the attic between my apartment and my neighbor's apartment was connected through trapdoor-style entryways through the roof. Shortly after we started to realize that our master bedroom became unusually cold even though our heat was on. After about a week of enduring this, I tried caulking up the windows, thinking they were leaky. The cold continued. I checked the vent, but it was blowing warm air, but about a foot away it dispersed and remained cold. We moved to our spare bedroom and everything was fine. Shortly following our bedroom swap, we bought two sugar gliders whom we put in the spare room. Sugar gliders are usually pretty docile animals unless you do not get hands on with them, but we played with them quite frequently. No matter how much attention we gave them, they became very feral. We decided to let them out of their cage, a five foot tall, two feet wide, one foot deep cage, and run free through the room. They mostly ran to the door and tried to claw their way out. They became mean and would bite us and be very aggressive. We promptly moved them to our room and eventually they became very friendly and lively soon after. We didn't think anything of it. Not long after, we got a cat and named him Charlie. It was now early spring. My son was born in September and was about six months old. Things started getting kind of weird. One day, when I left for work, I remember seeing our stroller leaned against the wall by the front door, wheels to the ceiling to keep it from rolling. When I returned home, it was in the middle of the floor in the living room, wheels to the kitchen. I asked the wife why it was there and not against the wall. She was in the bedroom getting ready to cook lunch and heard a bang. She then saw the stroller and decided to just chill in the bedroom until I got home. My now ex-wife is a definite believer of spirits, ghosts, and poltergeists. I blew her off as a fool and fixed it and went on with my day. A few days later, as we were trying to put the baby to bed, he would scream and cry like he was in pain. I suspected that he was teething, but he was only six months, maybe even younger. That couldn't have been the issue, and later on we realized it wasn't. After sleepless hours of pampering, singing lullabies, and calming him down, he finally fell asleep. The very next night, the same thing happened. Charlie sat at the doorway for some reason, watching us try to calm the baby. I told Charlie to get away because he kept distracting the baby. He walked away towards the kitchen. Suddenly, I heard a loud bang as if something heavy had fallen. Sounding as if the cat was kicked or stepped on, he squealed and shot into the room. He leaped onto the windowsill, back arched and hair standing on end. I grabbed my shotgun and cleared the apartment, but no sign of anything out of order or any sign of anyone in the house besides us. The baby was still upset. Frustrated, I ran to the local dollar store and grabbed him a glowworm toy. This glowworm, when you press the plastic belly, glows and plays soothing soft lullaby music. When I brought it home, I put fresh batteries in it and attempted to let him lay with it. Within 15 minutes, it had died. I changed the fresh batteries in the living room and tested it. Upon entering the bedroom, I noticed my wife to my right under that trapdoor attic, in front of the cold master bedroom. At least what I thought was my wife. I sat there looking at her. She was looking away, wearing a blue and yellow striped shirt, blue jeans with her blonde hair let down, exactly as she was that day. I attempted to reach out to her to see what she was doing. I heard the scratching of the gliders that we had put back in the master bedroom the night before in fear that my son was allergic to them. My wife, behind me, shrieked in terror. 
I jumped and almost wet myself seeing her. I looked back to see nothing but an empty hallway. Instantly, the baby calmed down, but the cat was beyond terrified. My mother still has that cat, who is still terrified of anything besides her and my stepfather. My wife later explained to me what a doppelganger spirit is. The next month we moved to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. My life following that event was anything but great. Shortly after I moved to Fort Campbell, I deployed to Kandahar Airfield, Afghanistan. Four months later, I was sent home because of an extremely rough and abusive divorce. I lost my house, my dog, my son, my wife, and both of my cars. Nothing was going right. Defeated, I was consumed with immense depression and anxiety. Years then passed, and in 2016, I met my ex-girlfriend. Everything was going good. Life was finally coming back together. My mind was coming back around, and I was becoming much, much healthier, mentally and physically. This didn't last long. I had been demoted and drifted back into depression. My girlfriend soon after moved in with me with her young boy. We had adopted five ball pythons and began breeding them as a hobby. This is where the real reason why I'm writing this and trying to get my story out there comes into play. One night, my girlfriend and I were watching The Conjuring. I had a surround sound audio system set up to my TV with a base between our two recliners and speakers in a U-shape behind and around us. Sometime in the movie, something vibrated on the counter to my right. Spooked, I asked her if that was her phone. She told me that she did have her phone, but it was dead. Then she asked me if it was mine, and I told her mine was in my pocket. Curious that it was the speaker, I rewound the movie to test my theory to no avail. We thought nothing of it and continued watching. We had a cool breeze of wind flow between us horizontally. Our vents were on the ceiling, blowing down, then dispersing throughout, never in a straight horizontal direction. I shrugged it off, thinking I was just spooked. She looked behind her and asked me if I felt that too. I blamed it on the base, but that made absolutely no sense. Long after this, my ex nervously elbowed me, telling me the lights in her son's room flashed. I told her maybe it's heat lightning, maybe he's awake playing. We didn't rule out heat lightning, but I'm OCD about closing my blinds and his bed is too high for him, and we hear a thump when he jumps out of bed, and his bed is on the far side of the room, away from the switch. I shrug it off again, still a skeptic. She elbowed me again, much more nervous now. I paused the movie and told her to tell me when it happens again. I got my video camera on my phone, ready to catch it. She signaled me and I instantly turned it on and shined it on the stairwell leading to the landing upstairs. The video, which I have lost due to losing my phone in a fishing accident, was only about 10 seconds long. I reviewed the video catching nothing. So I thought. The movie ended and we slowly made our way to bed. We were both understandably scared, but eventually passed out. At around 3.30 a.m., I woke straight up to the sound of nails tapping on a snake tank that was in our bedroom. The layout of our upstairs is the stairwell that led to a landing. Straight from the landing was a closet. To the right of the closet was the entrance to our room, and diagonally right across from our room is her son's room. Our room and her son's room were connected by a bathroom. After hearing the nails on the tank, I heard slow shuffling steps up the stairs. I started to panic, so I grabbed my shotgun that I always keep under my bed. I waited until the steps got to the landing and heard it walk into her son's room, stop, then walk out and back down the stairs. I sat up slowly, quietly, and tried to wake up my girl. The steps began back up the stairs and back into his room, then out and back down. Once it got back downstairs, I scurried as quiet as I could to the door, opened it, and cleared the stairwell. I called out to it, saying, Get out of my house. I am armed. No response nor any sign of movement downstairs. I ran into her son's room, scooped him up, and laid him in my bed and cleared the downstairs. No sign of anyone coming in. All the deadbolts were still done and all the windows were locked. 
Confused, concerned, and scared, I laid in bed and comforted my freshly woken family that I had a nightmare, blaming it on deployment. I fell back to sleep and had the vivid, lucid dream six times. My dream was unlike anything I'd ever dreamt about. I woke up, sleeping on a concrete bed with no bedding beside my girl and her son. The walls were concrete gray and the doors and window sills were metal. I moved to the door to the landing, opening it to a confusing and eerie sight. On the walls going down the stairwell were big blue words saying boy, only child, young child, and scribbled bad handwriting. It looked like it was written in chalk. I walked down the stairs, concerned about the unusual writing, to notice that my kitchen and living room were gone and replaced with a bunch of blue bathroom stalls on either side. I announced out loud, In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, who are you? Out jumped a tall, skinny, naked man with no genitalia, a black elongated mouth and jaw with deep sunken in eyes with no nose, saying, I am Rupert, as if he was excited to announce his appearance. I woke up in cold sweats and shaking. The same exact dream happened six times and my same reaction followed each dream. I woke up around 6 a.m. Sleep deprived, I called the local Catholic church and told them about my experience. They declined to even attempt to help me as I had snakes in my house, saying they are the idol of the devil and that's the reason behind the haunting. I told them about the issues in Texas, but they still refused. That day we spent all our time downstairs and even slept down there for the following week. That night we decided to go out to our local exotic pet store just to shop around for the snakes and just to get out of the house. Upon returning home, as I approached the sidewalk to park the car, my girlfriend screamed in terror. She grabbed my arm so tight that she left marks. Speechless, she pointed to the window that led to our room. As I stated earlier, I'm OCD about my window blinds as well as lights and closing doors. In the window that she was pointing at, I noticed a figure of a tall shadow figure pacing in the landing. My window blinds were up and the hall light was on with both her son's and my door open. Shocked, I parked the car and turned off my lights. The moment I turned off the lights, the figure stopped looking in our direction, slowly turned around and walked into the son's room, and the door closed. I was shaking. I have never been terrified that bad in my life. Not having any other place to take my family, we made our way in. I scurried to the bedroom and grabbed some bedding to sleep downstairs. Nothing was unusual about the upstairs, except that his bedroom had cold air radiating from the door, and this was around mid-spring. That night was nothing but footsteps upstairs walking in circles above us. I got almost no sleep. The next day after work, my girl and her son were stressed out beyond belief. They claimed that the footsteps were going from wall to wall and the door would randomly slam, and it was getting bad. Scared for the family, we left and went to the mall to get some supper and just spent the afternoon out. Late that night we returned. The blinds were up again and the door to the landing from my room was open. The lights were off. I thought. I pulled up, turned the lights off and shut off the engine. My girl nervously said my name, staring at the window. A black haze began receding back into his room as the light became visible. A black shadow was seen walking back into his room. Instead of fear, I felt anger. I told them to stay here and I barged into the house, stampeded into the bedroom, shut the door behind me and sat on his bed in the dark. I couldn't see across the room. My grandmother was super religious and gave me prayers to pray to try to help. I started reciting some of them, saying, In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who are you? A sense of depression, guilt, and rage overwhelmed me. I then began rebuking the spirits of depression, guilt, and rage, and all those unwelcome spirits in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I continued to pray and even prayed to my late grandmother for assistance. The room began to clear up. The cold faded and the atmosphere lightened. 
Relieved with a rush of motivation and confidence, I ran around the upstairs praying to rebuke those spirits. Feeling hands on my back pushing me forward, I kept pursuing. I don't think they were good hands. Suddenly, my girl screams and I rush downstairs. A Catholic prayer candle that I burnt from my best friend's funeral had been sitting on the stairwell since I moved in, and nothing had bothered it ever, not even her son running up and down the stairs. This time, as I ran down, it toppled after me. Maybe I hit it? I don't know. Coincidence? I'll never know. The reason she screamed is because something pounded on the kitchen counter three times, mocking the Holy Trinity. I got even more mad and began praying downstairs. The next day I took that video I had recorded to a nerd friend at work. I told him the story and, as excited as ever, he went to work doing his nerd stuff. Ten minutes later he came back with a big old grin saying, Wanna see Rupert? He had slowed down the video frame by frame. Within five frames you can see a white blob on my stairs that turns and hightails it up the stairs. Then a face and hand pops out to look at me. The only clear thing we could catch was a screenshot with blue filter over the image to cancel out any shadow that appears. It was an identical match to what I had seen in my dream. After that debacle, everything became calm. We actually slept upstairs from then on. My most recent activity was in June or July of 2019. My son was visiting my current wife and I in Fort Drum, New York. As we were getting ready for bed, laying in bed talking about God knows what, we suddenly heard heavy footsteps coming up the stairs. I sat up straight, convinced it was my son. I said, Brantley, go to bed. No response as the steps stopped at the top of the stairs. I heard shuffling to the bedroom door and they stopped. Cautiously, I called out, Brantley, go to bed, buddy. No response. The door cracked open about three inches, and no one was there. Adrenaline surged through me as I realized what had just happened. I turned to my wife and whispered, He's back. She nervously said, Who? I said, Rupert. In disbelief, we crept in my son's room to find him passed out. I am sorry this story is so long, but I am very passionate about sharing it with the intent to give a YouTuber content to post on YouTube. I'm not looking for fame or anything. Just want to give my story out for people to listen to, as I've always loved creepy true stories growing up and to this day. If you're adept at paranormal stuff, you're welcome to give your input, as I'm still baffled as to what happened or what was in my house, and if it's gone or attached to me or anyone else. So a while ago, I responded to what I think might have been a poltergeist. I responded to a house in a rather okay neighborhood. Houses were well taken care of despite being mostly built in the early 80s. Most, if not all, two-story homes. Early in the morning, dispatch notified me of a possible home invasion slash robbery at one of the houses by an anonymous tip from a supposed concerned neighbor. The following is details that I jotted down in my patrol book shortly after the incident. Note, I was not present when my lieutenant and sergeant were taking pictures. That was added in shortly after shift change when my lieutenant told me about their experience. January 24th, 2022. Dispatch notified by concerned neighbor at 0217 hours of lights and sounds coming from a home whose occupants are known to be on vacation. First unit on scene, me, at 0224 with the unit call sign Charlie 2, shift sergeant, arriving approximately two minutes at 0226. Upon initial inspection of home, no evidence of forced entry on either front and back doors, which were locked. First story windows appear to be secured. Residence is a two-story dwelling with single light on upstairs. Upon dispatch making contact with the homeowners, we were advised of a spare key hidden in a fake rock located near the main steps under a small bush in the front of the house. Decision was made to make entry 0230. Two more units arrived, Charlie 4 and Charlie 9. 
Entry of the house, weapons drawn. Two-man teams were utilized to clear the house. Upon initial inspection, main foyer was clear with no evidence of tampering. Dining room and den slash living room was also clear with no evidence of tampering. Kitchen and laundry room showed evidence of tampering with various drawers and cabinets open. Freezer door was ajar and several items spelled out. Several knives from knife block appeared missing or strewn about the floor of the kitchen. Laundry room light was on and laundry detergent was deposited on the floor. Several items of clothing were torn and strewn on the floor. Door was slightly damaged along with the drywall where the doorknob struck it. Upstairs hall light was on. Two out of three doors were ajar with one room that has its light on. Upon entering room with door open with lights on, appears to be the master bedroom. Bed was not made with pillows thrown about. Blankets and sheets were balled up at the foot of the bed. Master bathroom light was also on, with a large mirror that appeared to be shattered. Several articles of clothing were ripped similar to the ones in the laundry room and thrown about. Some on the floor, some in the bathtub, and some in the sink. Shards of mirror were all over the floor and bathtub. The last two rooms were searched and deemed cleared. Room 2, which was also open, had several items tampered with. Doorknob appeared damaged, bed was unmade, and sheets and blankets were balled up at the foot of the bed similar to the master bedroom. Room 3, door was closed, had no evidence of tampering. Upon rallying in the main foyer of the first floor of the house, several large bangs and what was perceived as heavy footfalls appeared to be coming from upstairs. I, Charlie 2, and Charlie 9 made our way back upstairs where the master bedroom door was again ajar. All upstairs bedroom doors were closed before going back downstairs. A lone picture laid on the entrance of the master bedroom which appeared to have two large burned holes through the face of both people in the picture. Master bedroom had several pictures removed from the wall and placed on the ottoman at the foot of the bed. All pictures were damaged to include broken glass, bent slash warp frames. Several shoes were also removed from the closet and placed on the nightstand and the lamp was knocked over. Upstairs was again swept and no other anomalies were discovered. All upstairs windows were locked and secured. All lights were subsequently turned off and all doors were secured and locked. Upon exit of the house, dispatch was notified no persons were found inside the house and the house was again secured. However, damages were observed in several rooms. Decision was made to patrol the street and surrounding neighborhood. I and Charlie 9 remained in the area on patrol. All units departed at 0410. Approximately 0422, Charlie 9 drove past the house and all lights including exterior lights were on. Glow from the inside of the house where the den slash living room was located appeared that the TV was now on. Dispatch was notified and I arrived on scene again approximately 0424. Entry was again made of the house. Several appliances including gas stove was on, all five burners, microwave and garbage disposal. TV was on with full volume. Dryer was running along with washing machine. A radio could be heard playing at full volume upstairs. First floor was again cleared. Upon clearing the last room, laundry room, heavy footfalls along with the sounds of grunting and dog-like growling could be heard from upstairs. No dog was present or observed the first time we entered. Our presence was announced and we made our way up the stairs, again weapons drawn. Sounds were emanating from the master bedroom and orders to step out with hands held up in plain view were demanded. These orders were announced several times, all the while sounds of growling and murmuring were heard. Upon entry of the master bedroom, the nightstands were now upside down on the master bed. All drawers from the dressers were open and clothing articles were strewn about. All noises including appliances stopped once we made entry into the master bath. All lights including the master bath lights were turned off without us doing so. Upon exiting the master bedroom, going down the stairs and exiting the front door of the house, we notified dispatch of our findings and concluded that we will no longer be entering the premises. Charlie 1, Shift Lieutenant, and Charlie 2 arrived on scene to document the findings at approximately 0500. Pictures were taken of the scene to include the damages observed before being forcibly pushed by unknown entity. Charlie 2 sustained minor abrasions on left forearm and minor laceration behind right ear from being knocked over. 
No further personnel permitted on premises until arrival of homeowners. All pictures and reports were given to investigations for further follow-up. Hey guys, glad to see you made it to the end of the video. Have you ever had any strange or paranormal occurrences? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. If you have any stories you'd like to be narrated, be sure to send them in. Alright guys, that just about wraps up the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. So long, fear seekers. I'll see you in the next video.